what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we back again with a new video guys. My name is Divan. Today, the video itself, Ahmed did that lecture. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. This is about Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Hmm. This is my first time checking this out. And, um, I can't, I don't know what to expect because I don't know what Ahmed did that is going to say during this um, lecture. So, uh, Let's watch and see, guys. You know how to we'll talk less right away at war. Let's get into this video. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. My my question is one of curiosity. If if the Muslim believes in Jesus Christ as being a prophet, then I assume that means that they're revering his message and what he was. So my curiosity is one in the Christian description of him, say by the prophet Isaiah when he's referred to as the coming Messiah being Emmanuel, translated as God with us, and also in the men that he was with, that he trained up, who, when they relate his story, relate frequent inst instances where he, they say that no man comes to God but through me, and that I am the bread, the truth, the life, that I am God. So it's, I'm curious about how you handle that. It's a very, very pertinent and straightforward question. Straight request, you know, it calls for my response on that level. You see, uh, there are quotations in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament where a description is given about somebody, something, maybe the Messiah. It says, and he shall be called, I'm quoting, called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He shall be called Emmanuel. Now I'm asking people, I said, look, you've got 27 books in the New Testament, 27 books. In any one of these books, is it ever mentioned anywhere that Jesus was ever called Emmanuel? Was he called Emmanuel? He was called Jesus. He was called the Messiah. He was called the bread of life. He was called this, <laughs> the truth of God. All that, the word of God. Was he ever called Emmanuel in any one of these 27 books? Was he? No. So it means he's not referring to him. He shall be called. Like you no, said, no, the man no, comes no, along, no. he's going to lecture to you people on the subject, uh, two pictures of Jesus, Quranic and Biblical, and that man shall be called That's the Messiah. Wrong. Now, did anybody call me Messiah? No. So it's, there's no fulfillment. Can you see? If I wasn't called Messiah, I'm not the Messiah. He was called, and he, nobody ever called him. He shall be called. I said, you see, that refers to Muhammad. Because Muhammad, you see in the Quran, in the Holy Quran you read that Muhammad and Abu Bakr at the flight, they were in a cave, and they were almost being caught out. And Abu Bakr says, he says, look man, they are almost, they are upon us. We are done for. And Muhammad says, Inna Allah ma'ana, Emmanuel. In Allah, God is with us. Emmanuel. Muhammad said that, not Jesus. Jesus on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. You see, at the critical moment, when you have God with you, who says that? Muhammad says that. In Allah, mana, which is the exact translation of Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus says, according to your record, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God is not with him. He is forsaken by God. That's at the critical moment. So this is not referring, nowhere referring to Jesus. With regards to Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Mr. Didat, what have you to say to that? I said, I have to respond. He did say that. I am the way. He is the way. You see, in the context now, let's have a look at it in the context. You see, the disciples of Jesus misunderstood everything. Everything he spoke, they misunderstood. 
and his present day disciples and followers misinterpret everything he uttered with apologies. You see, this is in John chapter 14. At the beginning, we are told, Jesus says, in my father's house there are many mentions. Had it not been for so, uh, so, I would have told you. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. In other words, I assume you understand what I'm talking about. He's telling his disciples. You know where I'm going, and you know how to reach that destination. So they say, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? In other words, they misunderstood. Jesus is talking about spiritual matters, spiritual goals, spiritual destination. They are thinking of geographical locations, Washington, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, what? They think, it's a, look, we don't know where you are going, and how are we going to get there? <sighs> look, misunderstanding. He's talking about spiritual things, they are thinking of geographical, geographical places. So Jesus, in answer to that, says, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It means if you want to know where I'm going, look at me. The way to God is personified in me. Look at me. The truth of God is personified in me. Look at me. True life is personified in me. Look at me. If you follow me, you will reach your destination. And they misunderstood again. No, it was too heavy for them. Too heavy for them, for his disciples. The simple statements, they can't understand. Everything they're misunderstanding. So they said, look, Lord, show us the Father and it suffice at us. Look, all this you're talking about is too heavy for us, too heavy. We don't know what you're talking about. Just show us God. If you can see God, we'll be satisfied. In answer to that, Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. You know, you ought to know better than that. You are a Jew. And as a Jew, you know, no man can see God and live. God is not seen at any time. That's what the scriptures say. He's not seen at any time. And no man can see God and live. If you see God, you'll be consumed. And you with me for so long? And you're still asking such a silly, making such a silly request? You want to see God with your bodily eyes when you can't look at the sun? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Meaning, if you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. Same John is talking other places, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Means you see and you don't see. If you have seen me, meaning not physical seeing, because Philip had no defect in his eyes. If he had, Jesus would have healed him. If he can heal other people from the blindness, why not his disciple of his def defect in sight? No, he's not talking about physical sight. Means if you have seen me, he had that has seen me, I mean, if you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. You wouldn't, you wouldn't make such a silly request, wanting to see God with your bodily eyes. Way to God, you see, that every prophet of God, in his own time, in his own dispensation, is the only way to God. In the time of Moses, Moses was the way to God. If you wanted another way, the children of Israel chose another way, through the golden calf, for which 24,000 people were killed. The Jews, killing Jews. God's command says, destroy them. This rubbish, you know, they're worshipping a calf, kill them. One book says 23,000, other says 24,000. We kill for that. Why? Because they chose another way. There's only one way to God, is through the way of the prophet of God. The prophet of the time, he tells you, in the time of Noah, Noah was the way to God. You want to be saved? Get into the ark. That's all. No fasting, no prayer, no zakat, no pilgrimage, nothing. No. Just get into the ark. Salvation is yours. That's all. You see, he's the way to God. Anybody who got in, saved. From physical destruction as well as spiritual destruction. Listening, hearken to the prophet of God. In the time of Jonah, Jonah was the way. In the time of Jesus, Jesus was the way. In the time of Muhammad, this is his dispensation. Muhammad is the way. If you want another way, it will not be accepted from you. Because Christ told you that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He had the message. He had the solutions. But now he didn't have the time. The poor man is on the run. As soon as he opened his mouth, the Jews were after his blood. And a man on the run, he's got no time to give you all the teaching. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. And we are prepared to reason with you. Let us have a dialogue. 
I have written a book called what the Bible says about Muhammad. This deals with prophecies from the Old Testament. I have delivered a lecture on Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ. It's available on videotape. I haven't had a chance to write the book yet. But inshallah, God willing, I'll write the book. You see? So in other words, now let us have a dialogue. Who is the spirit of truth? Who is the comforter? And what does this mean when he says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. He is the way to God. He is not the goal. To the Christian, he is the goal, he is not the way. He said that we must talk and reason how I see it, how you see it. And by that we might arrive at truth. What truth is, really is. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Ahmed did that explain his own point of view clearly, but <laughs> I don't feel like I accept that. Not one bit. I did not accept that part. So we're going to read the contest itself because that's what we're going to check. John chapter 14, verse 1. So everything we're going to be talking about, um, according to this financial, we'll have to read the scripture. To get a full explanation what the scripture is saying is what is the emphasis they're making when jesus say i'm the way the truth and the life so we have to read the scripture in the context itself to understand uh, his own point of view according to what he says say each prophet that comes at the way i decline that and i did not accept that that is not the truth he he's he's not explaining it properly from my own understanding so i want to read the scripture itself to you guys so whatever you think whatever you believe it's fine by me so let's just read the scripture and, and see what jesus himself said do not let your heart be troubled verse one you believe in god believe also in me my father's house has many rooms if that were not so i would have not told you that i am going there to prepare a place for you verse three and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way, verse 4, you know the way to the place where I am going. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Verse 8, Philip said, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. So then the self, they are trying to like, just show us the father itself. So we don't have to argue or talk more about this. That's what Philip said, show us the father. Verse 9, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father and that the Father is in me? Don't, verse 10, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? They put a question mark there. The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Can you hear that? Believe me, verse 11, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Verse 12. Truly, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than this, because I am going to the Father. Verse 13, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. 
It's a, it's clearly written there. So you guys will say um, the Bible has been translated and translated. So so a lot of things have been altered. The reason why Christians pray in Jesus' name, it's because of this verse itself. Because of this specific verse, we pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, and, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name. Guys, this is the reason why. That Christian himself we would pray in Jesus' name, because that is what the scripture itself taught us. Or is still teaching us, let me... So, I might do that explaining his explanation. Um, each prophet that come um, is the way, each prophet that come is the way, is the truth. That is not true. I fully decline that. That is not what is written in the scripture. You see, this, this life itself, um, if someone come about with their own thoughts and, and their own understanding of things, that you do not refer back to the Bible itself, you'll be truly be misled. Do I accept what my dad said? No. Each prophet that come, they are not the way. Moses was never the way. Noah was never the way. Abraham was never the way. Jesus himself is the son of God. He made emphasis. He explained it in depth. Though he was in hurry because he knew very soon he's going to die. But he explained it. Um, I've not read the Quran fully, so I truly don't, I can't um, talk about anything about what Muhammad said when he was like, God is with us. You see, it is very written there. Um, Matthew, verse 1, verse, chapter 22 to 23. It said fully, what the Lord has spoken by the prophet, behold, the virgin shall conceive. It said, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name. In man way, which means God with us. So it's very, very, it's very, very open. So God with us, they don't have to be calling Jesus a man way, a man way, a man way. What is the meaning of the name itself? It was written there, which means God with us. That was what Jesus was making emphasis on in John chapter 14. So if you read the scripture itself, Jesus was all the standing name. God is with you right there. Because he came in human form does not mean he is not with you. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So if you keep on deliberating on that and arguing on that, I'm not here to argue or talk about it or argue. I'm not here to keep on arguing. So I don't know whatever you believe. I don't know what, whether if you still believe me, you can go read the scripture for yourself and clearly it's very written there and you're going to understand. So, um, that's my own opinion about this. Uh, comment down below what you think. Subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Share this video as many as can, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all